and Todd Washington Commanders podcast brought to you by Fan Sided. And Todd, this has been a while. Uh, the name yep. change. Uh, we are Commanders now. Um, I fully embrace it. I actually like it a lot. Um, mm, okay. A lot has happened or yeah. as much happened from since then to now. But how you feeling, man? I mean, it's, we're, we're, we're into the thick and thin of the offseason. How you feeling? Yeah, so you said you love the Commanders thing. I'm still not there. Like, I'm not hating on it. Don't love it, but, you know, I'm, like, I've am like i accepted it. But I can't say I, I love everything. The name itself is what I'm talking about, the name Commanders. Still right. feels weird. It's still crazy to me that, like, that's actually what we are now. But, you know, whatever. But, yeah, I'm cool with it. And then um, Ron Rivera said in his press conference just moments ago that their OTAs start at April 18th. And that is like six weeks from now seven weeks from now that that actually is kind of crazy because it feels like that's not that long from now and it feels like the season just ended so it kind of gives me hope that maybe we'll get through this thing fast because like you said nothing has happened like nothing has happened but we are what uh 18 days away from the new league year from free agency which means we'll start getting some action uh leading up to that and then uh once that comes and then uh and then we got the draft you know so i'm doing okay because at least we have the we have that stuff to look forward to versus after that when we really have nothing to look forward to so i'm doing all right and yeah it's been like i guess three weeks although it's feel it feels like it's been longer but now as you can see we've got a new brand the team rebranded taste so i said hey we might we might as well go ahead and just rebrand too while we're at it so yeah the tan top Com- i almost thought about taking commanders out of it too and just saying the tan Todd podcast but i don't know i'll, I'll need know, to get your definitely. thoughts on that at let, some let, point let the fans let us know what they think Tan-tod, yeah 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 tan Todd podcast or tan Todd washington football team washington commanders podcast right exactly which one I, i'm because now that people know what we're about they know what we focus on like do we need to say it still you know but uh, i don't know yeah let us know what you think if you think we should keep the commanders in the name or just go tan top podcast so yeah so that's how i'm feeling how are you feeling like i said i'm, I'm good um, i'm piggybacking where you are it's, i feel like this off season has went by extremely quick it kind of feels like it's going fast previous years you know right and right not a lot has happened i mean last year we had the trade you had the, the trade with the 49ers moving up to pick Trey lance and then you yeah. had matthew stafford Right, uh, right, going right. To the Rams and a lot of uh, talk, even yeah. it seemed like Deshaun Watson information last year. And right. Russell Wilson with his four or five teams that he was interested in going mm-hmm. to. So this year, I mean, yeah, this year it's just, I mean, what? Still talk, but no action. Still talk, but no action. Um, right. Which, which gives me hope. Uh, I don't think there's any clear runner for any of the star quarterbacks. I mean, we've heard stuff about um, we've heard stuff about Rodgers wanting to go to uh, well, we don't know what about Rodgers, but we know that, the, <laughs> yeah. that they want to trade him to the AFC. Right, right, right. So, and that he doesn't want to come to Washington. That's so what I don't heard. know what I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm feeling good. I'm excited. I'm encouraged. Um, I think we have a real shot this year, as opposed to previous years, of getting that guy. However doesn't seem like anybody's available <laughs> that's the that's the problem yeah exactly that's the thing it's like last year they were less willing and 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 there weren't as many options and right. this year they're more willing but you know because there's all this talk all right so you had Aaron you have Aaron Rodgers who I think will be traded but I don't think the Packers will trade him to the AFC and I just think all the Denver and Rodgers talk just makes too much sense and is ultimately what will happen then you got Russell Wilson. Everyone's talking about it again. He's getting asked about it this year. But 
they haven't said anything. The team hasn't said anything. No real uh, like big time reporter has said anything. On top of the fact that if Pete Carroll had left or gotten fired, then it's more believable. But now it's like he's still there. Are they going to start over? What can you give them that would make them want to trade Wilson? That would give them another quarterback. And so ultimately, I think Russell Wilson is not going to get traded. Maybe, maybe I think next year would probably be the year, especially if they don't you know make the playoffs. And then you got Deshaun Watson, who is like absolutely going to be traded at some point, but not until there's much more clarity on his legal situation, especially surrounding the criminal charges that may or may not, I assume won't be, but may or may not be pursued by the police department in Texas or in Houston. And no one's going to trade for him as long as you're not sure if he'll be charged with anything criminally. And I think that is April 1st, if I'm not mistaken. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it's April 1st when that's mm-hmm. supposed to be. So that's just like in a holding pattern. Everyone talked about Derek Carr. I mean, <laughs> I, he, they're, now they're talking about a long-term deal right. there. And so what does that leave us? And then Jimmy Garoppolo, who will get traded, but who was also having surgery. People forget that he is injury prone. He's mm-hmm. had two years where he wasn't, but he's been the rest of his career. He's coming off an injury. He's already not that great. After that, you're left with getting excited about Mitch Trubisky. You know, Carson Wentz maybe. and Carson Wentz, who who will it seems by all accounts be traded, possibly released, mm-hmm. and then just you know the the Bridgewaters and the Tyrod Taylors of the world. So it's not a great situation, take because like you said, they're willing to do stuff, but you know it's like you can you you can you can want to dance, or but if you don't have a partner, you can be dancing by yourself. <laughs> yeah, and and that's the thing. I at least want to see them try. I know I made a joke. Yeah. Them couple of weeks ago saying that I want to hear that they called every single NFL team. I want them to call the Bengals and say, what does it take for Burrow? <laughs> I want them to call. I don't care who it is. Call yeah. whoever. Right. See what it takes. I just want to know that they tried. Yeah. And if I can, I can live with the fact that they tried and that they're willing to offer because um, I mean, even with the stuff with Kyler Murray now, I, I doubt he gets traded, but yeah, I mean, it's in the right offer. You still I mean, have to ask. That, Yes, you still have to ask. You know, something that stood out to me, I guess we'll hit on this, a couple of takes from Ron's presser was, Yep. I think someone, I think it was Finley asked him what the value is yeah. of of a quarterback of, of that stature. And he said, whatever you pay, that's the that's what the value yeah, is. Yeah, right, right. You know? Yeah, that stood out <laughs> that, to me that too. shows the value. You know? Right. And I'm like, wow, you know, so. Um, he was basically, that was the opposite of last year when he said, well, you don't want to mortgage the future, right. you know. <laughs> right. You right. really don't. You really don't. Right. So that was the opposite of that. You're right. Absolutely. That stood out to me, too. Yeah, that, that was huge. So, um, like I said, it, it just seems like we're in a, a holding pattern. However, I think he, he made a, he made a comment that, that stood out. He said, this week has already been interesting. Yeah, yeah, that stood out, too. Uh-huh. I know that's his favorite word, interesting. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, uh, to say that is two days in, I, I would say, uh, says a lot to the point where mm-hmm. I think that nothing has happened this year. I think a QB domino will fall, whether it's via us. Or yeah, someone, or someone else. Yeah, this this week, I think yeah. you'll see the first domino fall this week. Yeah, I think it'll be out the blue too. I don't think it will be like even with Russell Wilson. I don't think he gets traded. But if he did, I don't think you would hear he's requested a trade. These teams are interested. I think it would be Russell Wilson's been traded, yeah. or at the most, this team and that team are this team and the Seahawks are closing in on a deal. I mean, the um, Matthew Stafford trade was out of nowhere last year. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you kind of thought maybe he would kind of get, maybe possibly get moved, and then it was, hey, he's gone. Yeah. And and Ron talked about that today. He said we got beat up by the Rams last year, which makes me wonder if they would have given what the Rams uh, gave in the two firsts because it kind of seems like that whole thing just happened without them ever having a chance to counter the offer. I don't know if they would have, though. Probably not. But, yeah, something's got, something's got to happen at some point, and then once that first domino falls, any other ones that are going to will. The Deshaun Watson is the most interesting one, right? Because obviously because of the player and the value situation. Uh, But because of the fact that there are so many, like so many things to consider. I mean, the value alone, but then the value combined with the, you know, the accusations and the legal issues that exist. Like it's, it's the biggest risk, but with the most, the most incredible possible reward you could ever get. I mean, we're talking about something that has never happened before. But, you know, what if you make that trade and then suddenly you have more women coming out and, and 
it, it continues and it doesn't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then my question is, again, and then again with Ron Rivera, people say, oh, well, he's a high character. Da, da, da. The thing about it is with Deshaun Watson, he had never been, there had never been questions about his character right. until this, right? It's not like he was a problematic player and locker room presence, all that. It was, no, he was by all accounts, a great character guy. And then boom, here this comes, right? And so my, my thing is if, if they did trade, and I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know that it'll happen because I think that there may not be enough clarity by the time where you have to make a decision, which would be the draft. Mm -hmm. But if you did trade for him, what, and I'm asking you, if, if you're Ron Rivera and you trade for Deshaun Watson, like the criminal charges, they say, no, we're not pressing criminal, but he hasn't settled the civil yet. You trade for him, you're at the press conference and you get asked about it. What is your answer? And like, how do you, how would you quote unquote defend trading for Deshaun Watson? I would say, I mean, it, it goes with the, with the name, um, the commanders in a sense. I know he's mentioned that he wants the team to be leaders amongst the league. And he's hoping that the, that the, the foundation has been built. The, the structure has been built in order. You heard him mention it multiple times in mm -hmm. order for him to bring in a person like that. And change his life, you know. I, yeah. I look at Ron as a guy who, I mean, you've seen uh, throughout the off season, uh, Reeves tweet, you know, him and yeah. Reeves close com uh, a close relationship and the Shazer Everett and all the all those things. I, I believe that it's the right scenario where Ron's like, look, look at my look at my background. See how I work with Cam. Let, let mm. this is still as this. Still, I mean, let's not forget he's still a young man. I mean, he's right, right. Old. Yeah. So let, let's let, let's give him an opportunity to turn his life around. And it, mm. like I said, it's still bad what he did, but all things considered, it's not like he, you know, he he's killed someone or or or. And, and I'm not trying to belittle what he did. Right, right. Please don't you know don't don't get it twisted. He well, he was wrong. He was wrong. But at the same token, he deserves a chance. And we've missed out on plenty of people who got second chances. I think if yeah. I think of uh, uh, Michael Vick. I think of other players. Yeah. Who 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 did worse and got a second chance. So that's what I'm saying it took to the medium say, look, let's get behind this guy. Let, I mean, you've seen his talent. He, he's up. He's like top three. He's competing up there with Mahomes and Allen. Yeah. He's, people oh, forgot how good Sean Watson is. That's what I'm saying. And I'm just like, let's get behind him. I'm, I'm going to plead to the, the fan base and say, let's get around him. Yeah. He's going to play good football. He's going to be the face of the franchise and let's, let's put it behind him. You know? Yeah. I think that's kind of the angle you have to come from is that, okay. So, you know, and again, at this point, they are civil lawsuits, they are accusations, so he has not been charged with anything criminally. The reality is probably that he was doing some things that were inappropriate and that there's also other powers at play. Like, both things are probably true. But the question is, okay, so he has to settle, he has to settle these civil lawsuits one way or another. After that, is his career over? Does he never get another job? Is he not allowed to work at all anymore, right? Like, that's the question, because if, I mean, not even just in the NFL. I mean, it's just a question, I guess, in general, in the world. When you, like, do you not get another opportunity, period? Because if you can't play in the NFL anymore, I mean, that means he just can't have a job anymore, right? Mm -hmm. But he obviously, that's not the way that this should work, right? Mm -hmm. You have to correct your actions or whatever you're doing. So then you have to say, okay, well, yeah, we traded for this guy. And, you know, I mean, it's a very, you have to be very careful about what you say and how you say it because you have, you can't belittle yeah, anything can't. that he was accused of. You can't, but at the same time, you can't sit here and say he was really, he was doing really bad stuff, but we don't care. You know, you have to find that middle ground. And I think of all the coaches and stuff, Ron Rivera is one of the ones who really could find the right way to say that. Hey, this, you'd probably say it exactly like you did, Tate. Hey, this is a young man. You know, yeah. he, we all make mistakes. You know, <laughs> I don't, but the thing um, is, like, people are quick to bash him, but instead, but have, I mean, the only difference between him and another person is he got caught or so to say, mm -hmm. you know, other people get, I mean, normal people like, like us, you know, right, right, right. You know, superstars, we get, we get away with, with way more stuff that people right. know because the, the spotlight isn't on it. Right. So I would say, I would say, you know, don't, don't be quick to judge. Don't be quick to judge. Mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get yeah. behind him as a, as a city, you know, and, and, and let's, Hey, this man can, <laughs> This man can go get you some. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he definitely could. And the thing about it, the, the reason why I even entertain it is because uh, like there definitely is, it, it feels like R Ron Rivera when he talks and I don't want to like over analyze, but it kind of feels like he, he knows something already. It does. Doesn't it? 
And they yeah. kind of feel like he already knows things are kind of in a certain place and certain things can or will happen. Like he, maybe it's just, maybe he's just very good at how, he, but it just feels like they kind of have, because you have to look at it again. We talked about Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, all those guys. So what are your options? He said there are four places you could find a quarterback on your roster, free agency, the draft, or trade. Well, we can rule two of those out immediately. Not mm-hmm. on your roster. You're not going to find him free agency. Right. So it's draft or trade. Let me look at trade. Who are the only real options? Well, Deshaun Watson is the closest to real option. I mean, what Carson Wentz and Jimmy Garoppolo. We're talking about potential franchise guys or the draft. And you don't have that much confidence in the draft. I mean, he talked about that as well at his press conference, said they've done some a, a ton of research, met with these quarterbacks, going to do, going to figure out which ones they want to go even deeper in research with and have, have for visits. And so ultimately, I guess you talk about a big swing and your options are what Rogers, Wilson, Watson. And mm-hmm. I think that they are, and it's been said that they are in on the Watson thing. If those big swings fail, I think that's when you just have to look at the draft. Mm-hmm. And I think that's their plan A, plan B mm-hmm. is trade for one of these guys, make these. And I, I think at some point we'll hear about some of the offers they were making if they don't get accepted. And then from there, plan B is okay. Well, we got to draft somebody. We got to draft our favorite quarterback because you have to do something. Mm-hmm. And it's, they put themselves in the situation. It's a bad spot to be in, um, where they need to win, but they also need to find a quarterback. And you know, it's not it's not great to 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 need a quarterback of the future, but also need to win this year, right? right? And so that's a bad spot that they're in, but. I guess for them it comes down to, well, do we think we could find someone who can get us to nine or ten wins this year, bias that next year? It's a tough spot, Tay, but um, all I know is that they did trade for Deshaun Watson. Yeah, I'm I'm all aboard. Yeah, yeah, same, same, same. And and the thing I like about this year is that uh, I, I guess they had the first year to do so with Chase. I know he got to meet Chase, and I'm sure they had an interview with uh, Herbert mm, yeah. and Tua. Right, right. Reports came out that that Ron liked to a little bit, you know. So this year, I'm expecting them to be able to to to. I'm expecting his the conversation needs to be like this. Okay, Scott, who do you want? You got the three top guys. Which one fits your offense the best? Mm -hmm. Who do you who would you want to see that's available first of all? Let's call so and so who who may not be on the market right now, but let's call and see if he's available. Right, Right. and let's see the three guys who are possibly available. Okay. Pick the one out of the three who you like best. And if mm. it goes to the draft, I'm expecting them to fall in love with a guy um, with, with the interviews. I know Ron is big on his interviews. Mm-hmm. And he and you can tell he really likes those those one-on-one interviews because right. he gets so excited because you can determine so much about their body language. Right. You know, why did they throw it here hot? And I think a couple of names that, that may stand out in that in that process will be uh Corral and um and how, and mm. the reason why I say that is because they're they're kind of underdogs in a sense where they are, hasn't yeah. done anything this off season. He's kind of like an unknown, right? And he is an unknown, he's a huge unknown that which could work out in his favor, you know, and could work out for our favor because both of those guys should at least be there at eleven. Yeah, uh, I think so. You won't have to move up to two to get those two guys in. And I don't know about Willis. You have to move up to two for Willis. I think. <laughs> I have no I mean, idea. To ensure it, you probably want to move up to two, but I think five or six, maybe. Well, the thing is, five, six, and seven are Giants, Panthers, Giants. So you're kind of looking at, I mean, probably not trading up with the four. Giants. Panthers might go QB, so four or eight. Four, four or higher or eight, yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I don't know. This this year is so weird because it's like it is. I can't see Pickett going top three either, you know. It's no, like, no. And the Panthers are apparently in love with Kenny Pickett. Which you know would uh, uh, slides Malik Willis to nine Denver, right? Exactly. Right. But then they they probably have Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's it's it's, it's tricky, man. There's it's, a it's lot, yeah. But you can't with the with, like you said with the position they're in, you can't sit back. You you got to kind of take the initiative. This, this you year do, you do. And jump the gun, even if they say overdraft or what or or not. But right, you have to be. You have to if like. However you feel about a guy, regardless of how you have yeah. to ensure that you get him. Yeah. You know, all this talk about this quarterback draft class being weak. Well, okay, regardless of any of that, if that's your guy, if that's you, if that's who you think you can come out of this offseason with the best potential for the future, you got to make sure that you get him. And right. 
and you can't worry about winning well set because at, you know at the end of the day whether you trade up to get him or whether you draft him if he doesn't work out you're getting fired you know so it really doesn't matter all that matters is that he works out what you gave up really won't matter at that point because you won't have another chance if that doesn't work out and the right. thing is it, it feels like there it feels like until and I'm, i'll be honest with you because we've been talking about this since the 2020 offseason 20, i mean for for forever but on this podcast i mean from the very beginning we've been talking about quarterback but uh like it start it really is starting to get tiring to i'm tired of speculating about what mm-hmm. they'll do and whatnot but it feels like we can't talk about anything else until then because yeah, yeah. they have other needs on this team. Like they need right. more uh, explosive offensive playmakers, right? They need a middle linebacker. They're going to have to replace Brandon Sheriff. They're going to, you know, they, they need a better safety duo than uh, to someone to match up with uh, 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 30, uh, <laughs> someone to match up with Cam Curl. Someone Cam to match Curl. up with Cam Curl. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so like they have needs. But it feels like, and, and I mean, they want they want seven games. The biggest thing is that their defense underperformed so significantly. Mm-hmm. And what do we do about that? But I feel like I can't talk about any of that until yeah, exactly. I know what we're doing at quarterback. Exactly, exactly. And going into this offseason, like going into free agency this year, I really don't know what, what they're, I mean, I think middle linebacker is the main one. But other than that, I really don't know what route they'd go other than the middle linebacker and offensive line. Um, yeah. The 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 name that's been getting the buzz this week, and it literally is a week to week thing, Tay, with mm-hmm. Washington and quarterbacks. But like mm-hmm. we've gone through so many names. Um, Mitch Trubisky is getting all the talk this week. When people ask, "Will you prefer Mitch Trubisky or Jameis Winston or Jimmy Garoppolo or Carson Wentz?" My answer is no. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have people talk around the league. Oh, Trubisky should be a starter. Oh, it was Jim Nagy. You know. Oh, he's been so impressive with the bills. And so he's going to get an opportunity somewhere, but I got to be honest with you, Ty, for me, when I'm talking about quarterback, my question is, do I think that I could potentially win a super bowl with that quarterback? Mm-hmm. Now with the rookie, obviously that's, it's, it's a tougher to predict, but the, the question is, well, do I, do I think that that player has the, has the mental and the physical traits to potentially become the type of player I could win a super bowl with, uh, or the pedigree, and then if it's someone already in the league, it's have they shown me that they're the type of player you can win a Super Bowl with? And if the answer is more of a no, then I'm not interested. Rookies mm-hmm. are much more of a wild card. You can get lucky. Mm-hmm. Veterans are not a wild card. Right. And with those four guys I named, do I think I can win a Super Bowl with them? No, I don't think I can win a Super Bowl with any of them, including Jimmy Garoppolo. So I'm just, I really don't care for, for any of them. Jameis yeah. Winston, any of them. I it would be tough to go into another season knowing at the end of that season, you're doing it all over again. Right. And then at the same time, I really don't know what they can do because they got to do something. Exactly. So it's a terrible spot. They're in a terrible spot, today, but yeah. it maybe could still work out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough, but I'm, I don't know. For some reason, I just think, I don't know, man, I, I they know something, uh, Ernie yeah. or, or, mm-hmm. or Mayhew. And and I really believe a domino will fall this week. Um, whether you see a, a Deron Payne extension, mm. I think that all but clears the way for a Montez Sweat trade package to get offered uh, somewhere else. If you notice what he said, and I may be reading too much into it, but he didn't sound like Sweat was a big – I know they asked him about Sweat. Mm-hmm. And uh, he kind of – breeze by it and, and some political answer yeah but um i don't know like you said you, you just can't swing for a fitzpatrick situation right right uh like last year um and you can't go with heineke so no you can't you, you gotta you gotta give hope you gotta provide hope to somebody yeah i mean to everybody not to somebody right and so, um I, I don't know the wild card for me is corral man i if if he can, I just I just don't know. I think he has some good traits. His offense is kind of hard to to look at as far as what he can yeah, do. It is. He's it like is. a wild card man. Where he, if you get him at eleven, saying I mean he's probably going to fall to like second round. Maybe I mean now maybe top twenty. Somebody will reach on him. Man, I really, I, I I really don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. If you can get him at 11 and it's like, well, we like this guy a lot. Let's see if we get them. They'll get him at 11. Yeah. Because I just don't think he's going to have enough time to, to, to build his stock. 
I mean, yeah, you get the pro day and, and, right. and, and that, and then have some individual visits, some private visits. It's, it, yeah. I don't know. I, I just, I would rather go, I would rather sit at 11 and pick whoever's there, the best out of whoever's there, or whoever fits their offense, than take a Trubisky yeah. or Winston. Look, or, me too. Yeah. I would rather buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. Then take the minimum wage job. I yeah, mean, sure. obviously, I know in in real life that's obviously right. not the best practice. But right. <laughs> you know, terms. yeah, in football terms, like, do I want to just continue to be broke, knowing I'm going to be broke, right. or just let me just you know, let me go take place it. one wager. You know, right. there's a there's a thirty or forty percent chance you'll win because first round quarterbacks, the odds are you know they're not like zero. You know, they're not super low. They're in the the thirty to forty percent range. Mm-hmm. Give me, give me, give me those odds, and we'll know pretty quickly if we didn't get it. And if we didn't get it, then give me those odds again, and then again, and keep giving me those odds until I find one. How many first round quarterbacks have we drafted uh, in the last twenty years? Dwayne Haskins, that that was n- in no way the right structure for drafting a first round quarterback. Robert Griffin the third, Jason Campbell, and Patrick Ramsey. So you've done it four times in twenty one in twenty years, mm-hmm. and. And I mean, at really, at no time has there been a proper structure for any right, of them. Jason right. Campbell had three offensive coordinators in three years. Robert Griffin mm-hmm. III was that was just a whole mess. Dwayne Haskins, another big mess. So, mm-hmm. and I don't even really understand all the context with the Patrick Ramsey situation. Yeah. But you know, so, but th- this is the best situation for it. It's like you said, I'd rather take the rookie, and I'd honestly rather throw the rookie out there and find out what he's got. And if he's not good, okay. Then to take someone where I really know he doesn't have it, and then he doesn't have it, and then I'm supposed to act surprised. Right. Right. Um, right. So, and then, and then at, at the end of the day, I think one, at, at least one of these quarterbacks in this draft, I think, will be good. Like, oh, yeah. you can say it's weak all you want, but what really makes a strong quarterback class? Mm-hmm. How many of the quarterbacks need to be good or very good? Really, two. I mean, mm-hmm. if you think about it, it's two. 2018, there is two. Josh mm-hmm. Allen, Lamar Jackson. No one's going to talk about Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, uh, Josh Rosen. But no one would say that was a bad draft class, right? Because that's right around what the odds are. So I think at least one of these guys are. Find out which one it is and get them. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to be big because, um, like, like you said, I think this is the first time we've had a situation where if you plug a guy in, um, even if he's average, you might be able to get 10 wins this year. I mean, you um, you you should be able to have some level of success. You should not yes. be a terrible team. Yes. And and if you can, like I said, even how, I mean, how he can, he can, he can, he can throw the football, he can, he yeah. can move out the pocket. Mm-hmm. And, and I think with, I think with him, Corral, Malik Willis, Pickett, um, I think those guys can can come in here and and instantly kind of. I just think the way the team is built and with the schedule, the schedule they have this mm-hmm. year. Not saying that we're a good team, but we, right. we look a lot. We look better than than most of those teams on paper. The Lions, the Colts, the the Houston Texans. You know, and a lot yeah, of those yeah. Teams that play this year, so it, it, it it's going to be interesting. I, I don't know. I don't know what direction they're going to go. Obviously, you get a quarterback of the Rodgers, Watson, Wilson. You're Super Bowl contenders right away. Mm-hmm. Rookie, you play off, probably playoffs, and then by year three, you're hoping to push for for perennial, you know, Super Bowl contenders. But yeah, um, it's 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 depressing because I, I I don't know. I just don't know how we can. I mean how we can get a guy. I just, I just don't know. Yeah. They're going to get any. The only way I could think of is them moving up right now is to say, Hey, look, we're just going to go up to, let's get, let's get your pick lines. We'll, we'll give you this, 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 we didn't <laughs> deal like last year, but we'll give you the same <laughs> offer we had for, 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 for staff. Stafford. Yeah. And do you take it or, or leave it? It's it. This draft has a lot of intrigue. It, you know, cause, cause nobody of intrigue. with them to move up. Yeah, no, I don't really think so. Nobody's in that, know, that in love with a guy. I don't think so, but you know, I just can't. I can't wait for that. Maybe the Steelers, you know, depending on where Malik Willis falls, I think that they, I think they have a range for him. Right, right. Um, but yeah, I would just, I a, a rookie quarterback will always give me hope that maybe right. you got lucky because even with you know Mahomes, no one expected him to be 
as good as he is, even if you thought he could be good. And I'm not saying mm-hmm. that you could draft someone and they'd be Patrick Mahomes because he's a, he's just special. But you could draft someone and it really doesn't matter what people think. It just matters what you believe. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the draft because it's more fun when you don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, last year we pretty much we knew what was going to happen. First three picks. Mm-hmm. But uh, this one's so different. What is your, as of right now, March 1st, what is your March 1st prediction for what ultimately will happen at quarterback, what they'll do, end up having to do? Man, um, I'm going to say Wilson. Uh, I, okay. I, I know I'm okay. setting myself up. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to say Wilson. I just, I think it's perfect match. Mm-hmm. Um I must say Russell Wilson will be the quarterback March 1st. Okay. Yeah. March 1st. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say they sign. I'm going to say Carson Wentz gets cut. They sign him and then they draft Malik Willis. Now, uh, Sam Howell. Hmm. Sam Howell. That's what I'm going to say. They draft, they, they sign Carson Wentz. They draft Sam Howell. I'm not a big proponent of signing Wentz. I mean, well, again, I really don't care about any of those guys because none of them really matter to me. Wentz, the fact that the Colts just traded for him, what they traded for the coach that, you know, he's supposed to have the success with. And after one year, they got to move on and they got to eat the dead money. That's like a massive, massive red flag. Like Mm -hmm. what happened? What went wrong? I don't know. I think Wentz maybe just doesn't have it up here in terms of mental toughness or something. I don't know what it is, but there's something wrong if that's the case. So that, you know, you sign Wentz, no one's going to be excited about that at all. And I'll be the first one not to be excited, but it's just a, it's an, it's an unfortunate prediction. But if they pair any of those guys up with a the rookie, then I'm on board. So that's all they have to do. I like how, man, I, I'm, I've been watching some, some, some stuff on him and uh, you can do a lot with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can do yeah. A lot with him. He can, he can throw off platform. He can, he can run. Yeah, he can. I he's sneaky, sneaky fast. So he's got some mobility. He needs to learn how to slide. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> he tries to run through guys, but uh, he did show he could run this year. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think if you set if you set up runs for him, yeah, I want what I what I want to see for help because he can do some escaping. I want to see him create with his arm more when he escapes yeah. some. But he's got a cannon, and okay. you know, Hal was coming out. I mean, going into this past season, Hal was supposed to be one of the top rated players. And, you know, what happened with him losing so much talent around him, it's not really just about him losing the talent because that's part of it. Now, he wasn't playing with these first-round picks with Jamar Chase and, I mean, Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson, these Alabama wide receivers. I mean, Downey Brown and, and what, Chaz Newsom? Was it Chaz Newsom? I think. Mm-hmm. They were like third and fourth-round picks. You had two running backs who were taken earlier. But his offensive line also was just, I mean, absolutely horrible. And so... Yeah, I mean that makes a big difference. So the so then people will say, well, you know, in the league, well, every quarterback needs support. So when you lose your support, it shouldn't be surprising when you struggle some. But people forget that he had he had a very very good freshman season and a really strong sophomore season. So mm-hmm. was it you know what what does he need to have success is the question with with Sam Howell. But what is he feeling? What, what do you what do you think? Before so we head out? yeah, before we head out, that's a good question. I want to say first of all. So the comparison is Baker Mayfield, right? The thing about comparisons, though, people take comparisons as a career path for that player, and that's not what it's supposed to be. A comparison is supposed to be play style and 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 really just that. So if you say Baker Mayfield, it means his play style in terms of like how he looks and physically what he can do, not how good he can be, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Because the one the, the thing that makes quarterbacks great the thing that separates the great quarterbacks from the not great quarterbacks is an x factor trait that you cannot determine i mean Peyton manning andrew luck and supposed to be trevor lawrence those are the ones right but there's 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 just something that maybe you you look like baker mayfield when you play but you have something up here baker mayfield doesn't have and that's what makes the difference mm-hmm. so i mean for me when i see when i look at how honestly people say baker mayfield i see it i see Derek carr mm-hmm. um and so mm-hmm. for me my ceiling for him would be a player like Derek carr who i mean my ceiling i guess my ceiling would be the best that Derek carr that we've seen from Derek carr like i don't mm-hmm. like to 
put hard ceilings on players because you just never know. Right. Um, I would say that the best that we've seen of Derek Carr, I think, in my mind, just to give a visual idea, but then, it, but then the question will be, can he be more consistent? Mm-hmm. And that we really don't know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but the best of Derek Carr is, is phenomenal. He was leading the league oh. in passing yards this year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and that's just what he looks like to me when he, when he, just, when he, when he plays. So I think, his, you know, I, think he's got a, I think he's got a decent ceiling. But uh, like, I think he's got a good ceiling. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just it's, you know, it's tough. Um, yeah, all right. Well, we have so much time to talk would about. Take, would, you take, would you take him over Fields last year? I don't know. I don't know because, you know, I started to like cool on Fields. Some I go back and forth um, just because Fields like – uh, uh, did this year happen? You're saying this year didn't happen, right? So Fields and Hal. Yeah. I feel like that's tough, man. That's tough. <laughs> that is really tough. Um, the easy answer is Justin Fields, right? Because you know you're gonna say who he played against, but you do have to consider who he played with. Um, but he is a better athlete, so I probably, I guess, I'd say Fields. I guess I'd say Fields, but but their trajectories are similar pass, to mine. Is a better passer? Is Fields a better passer? Mm-hmm. Man. Fields just does everything in slow motion to me, and that's why I kind of started to cool on him because yeah. it's, I'm not questioning his, his mental makeup at all, but he looks like he's moving in slow motion, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's sometimes it looks smooth, and then sometimes it looks like slow motion. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm trying to figure out if he can – he, if he can speed up or or move at the at least minimum speed he needs to because mm-hmm. um how you know i don't i don't feel that way about how how's release is is not the quickest it's slower but uh but he doesn't he doesn't look like he moves slow yeah. i don't know I, I i guess i'd say fields but yeah. but it's it's really tough to know for sure but they but they are the they are the comparisons between 2021 and 2022 for me cuz both of them you know were up here going up here and then Fields lost steam last year other mm-hmm. guys jumped him and then he had a stretch of games where he wasn't as great so he got jumped people kind of forgot how good he had been and i feel like Howell's the same way he got jumped by Pickett he got jumped by Willis you know but there's a reason why he was going up here or was up here the potential is still real so they're the they're the the pair comparing between 21 and 2022 mm-hmm. in terms of draft class uh quarterback prospects but yeah well we'll get back to it here i guess next couple of days and i'll be honest with you man i mean we'll we gotta figure out what all we want to talk about but a lot of it is probably just gonna be quarterback stuff yeah. just more in depth because it's just like what else is there really to talk yeah. I don't really care to talk about middle linebacker when we, you know, when our starting quarterback right now going, is Taylor Heineke. Yeah. It does because it won't matter who our linebacker is if that's our quarterback. So exactly. we can do some more like in-depth stuff on some yeah. of these quarterbacks. So it's been, uh, it's been good doing this again, Tay. Nice little break, I guess, but I guess time to get back to it. Back at it. Back, back at, at it. it. Okay. All right. Well, we'll be back again soon. Thank you for watching, listening, whatever. And uh, this is the Tay and Tat Commanders podcast, or maybe just Tay and Tat podcast with a new fresh look, but the same great content. So yes, yes. let us know what y'all think. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let us know. Exactly. This is your boy, Todd. And this is Tay. <laughs> <laughs>